yeah, I didn't. It didn't cross my mind because uh, just another thing to think about carrying you. Uh, This has been. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on, that's the front door. Two seconds. No Some would say that was just in time. <laughs> Hello and welcome all into the MO podcast. As always, you're here with me, Consummation San. And me, Atreya. And today we are going to be talking about Edward VIII, the former king of England. But and we were very much like for you to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Before we get into that, though, what we are going to ask is the. Uh, the, obviously the like and subscribe stuff so uh yeah if you will it'll help us in the algorithm and as always we've got a website out there it's the mopodcast.co.uk we've got blogs we've got all our podcasts are on there they're all embedded on there we've got new stuff coming out most of the time when we're I pick up free. stuff from the news, weird stories that I hear. There's loads of different things on there. Yeah, so it gets updated quite regularly, and you can find yep. all our links over there. So go and have a look. But now we yeah. will get on with the episode. Here we go. Back when Prince Harry dressed up in a Nazi uniform and then went to walk away from his royal duties. For some reason, people... Got his cock out the same day. Yeah. But for some reason, people were shocked and surprised. But if anyone would have bothered to look less than 100 years in the past to the behaviour of his grandfather slash uncle slash cousin, it's all a melting pot there. They would have seen history repeating. Now, the difference between the two is at the moment, Harry hasn't been involved in a murder yet. That we know of. Yeah. So Ed- It'd be nice if he murdered Megan. Sorry, made her unalived. Yeah. No. So <laughs> she's fit. Edward Albert Christian George Andrew Patrick David because <laughs> why just Excessive. give him a couple of names? Was born. You know what? It might be to appease all the relatives that were like, oh, call him such and such after me. Call him such and such after my friend. Like, oh, I've got to appease like 20 different people because we get like fucking funds or something from them or all their charities. What do you mean all the relatives? They've all got webbed feet and three teeth. There's four of them and they're all fucking doing each other. <laughs> You're a terrible person. I know. But they are terrible as well. So Edward was... The carrots are fucking livid. Would that be for you? He hates you and everything you stand for. They're getting a deeper shade of orange. <laughs> so Ed- like you. <laughs> They're just, yeah, trying to rub off on him. <laughs> so Edward was born on the 23rd of June, 1894. Now, this was while Queen Vicky was still on the throne. And he would see two kings come and go before he got a go on sitting on the big chair. Edward and his siblings were brought up by nannies and carers rather than their parents who were obviously off doing royal stuff and were too busy to bother with something as minor as raising their own children. Yeah, it's overrated anyway. Yeah. Now, although when they were with their parents, they did show affection and his mother not yet Queen Mary would encourage the children to confide and talk to her about issues that may be bothering him now see she could have sent him to a baby farm but she didn't indeed it is true it was the time and 
even though this was few and far between, the lack of interaction with his parents may have had an effect on Edward and he became emotionally stunted. In later years, he would describe the death of his youngest brother, Prince John, as little more than a regrettable nuisance. John, Siblings, innit? Yeah. John was 13, year, <laughs> 13 years old when he died. He was 11 years younger. Uh, Edward was 11 years older than John, and John had actually been suffering from epilepsy. And according to Edward... He'd been practically shut up for the last two years anyhow, so no one has ever seen him except the family, and then only once or twice a year. This poor boy had become more of an animal than anything else. So, 11 years is a big age difference, though. It is. If there was 11 years between me and my sister, I don't think we would be close. Yeah. No. What would we have in common? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, it, yeah, I, I don't think... They I don't think it's uncommon to not have it like specific a special interest in a sibling where there's that much of an age difference. No, of course. I mean, obviously, it would be more than a regrettable <laughs> happenstance. I mean, yes, yes, you'd kind of describe it a little better, even if you didn't feel that way. But yeah, it kind of shows yeah. his his lack of empathy at this at this point. But that came from having empathy showed to him, so he didn't necessarily know what that was. Hmm. And during the First World War, the Prince of Wales, as he was then known, wanted to fight on the front lines, but Lord Kitchener refused the offer, as this could cause the immense harm if the heir apparent to the throne was captured by the enemy. Despite being ordered not to visit the front line, he actually did, and he visited it often. He didn't fight, but he did see trench warfare going on around him, and he was made the rank of lieutenant in 1913. And he was also awarded the Military Cross in 1916 for what he actually did on the front lines. Good for him. So he wasn't he wasn't afraid to get his his hands dirty at this point in time, which when we go forward into the future, it's like fair enough. But it gets a little bit, yeah. So Edward was a bachelor for all of his royal life only marrying at 33 years old. Now, even though that was the case, he did put it about uh, he did put it about a bit. <coughs> and he took after Prince Albert, his great-grandfather and the lover Did he get the piercing? of Queen Vicky. I I do not know. The research <sighs> did not mention that. Uh he did a one source again, didn't you? If you'd have gone three sources in, you'd have found a defo <laughs> had the Prince album. I mean, the source that I did use, I used more than one, but obviously one of the <laughs> sources I did use was a bit, he was a bit ambiguous with his sexuality. Uh, I don't... Any holes a goal? Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely fine. I don't really want to focus on that because, you know what, there's nothing wrong with it. But... Mm-hmm. Back then and in the surroundings he was in, I think it would have been frowned upon. So he couldn't live his real life in that kind of sense. Mm. Uh, now, Eddie wasn't happy with the royal matches that were thrown his way. Obviously, they wanted to keep it in the family and they wanted to marry him off to some lineage or something that would keep all royalty, all him away from the paupers kind of thing. A second cousin or what have you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, even though he was getting all these royal offers, Eddie didn't really care and he was like roughing up with the common folk. He, uh, he had several lovers that were seen as below his status. Now, even though... Isn't everybody below his status? Yeah. He's royalty. Yeah. I mean, they weren't like maids are fucking you know they weren't the cleaners at the, at the palace they were they they lived in polite society and they were socialized yeah. i mean put it this way they could afford to pay their electricity bills these days so they were rich and they moved in the circles but which should have been fine yeah but it wasn't now 
The problem with Eddie hooking up with the majority with these women was that the majority of these women were married. Oh. And as her apparent, the husbands couldn't really start throwing hands. Uh, his father. Uh, yeah, what would you do? You just just have to go. Thank, well, thank shit. you, master. Uh, fuck. <laughs> so his father. <laughs> King George V would go on to say that he was reluctant to see him inherit the crown with him prophesizing, after I am dead, the boy will ruin himself in 12 months. Fair. Yeah, um, and it did come true. Uh, Georgie boy would die in 1936 and pass the baton over to his eldest son, Edward. But less than a year after ascending to the throne, King Edward VIII would turn his back on the royal life to marry the American divorcee Wallace Simpson. Now, I like that about him. Yeah, he did that for love. He was like, "Fuck, fuck my lineage, fuck the royal family. I love this bitch. I'm gonna marry her." Right. Okay. Even though she's American, and even though she's been married before, which is two things that we just don't do in the royal family, but. I'm gonna do it anyway. Indeed, indeed, and and yeah, that it could be some chival- chivalric stuff, uh, if that's a word. I don't think it is, but chivalric. Yes, there you go. <laughs> yes, is a word. <laughs> but I'm not 100 percent sure if Eddie was a bit thick, or it would not have any impact on his life, because he he just didn't understand why he couldn't do this this was a sticking point for him for over years and years and years he didn't understand why i don't if why he had to abdicate and why they never got along with wallace simpson that was the thing that he just couldn't get his mind around maybe he was more modern thinking than we give him credit for because i mean look at charles and camilla they're not related and nobody went you can't marry her everyone was like you know what okay we hated her for a long time but go on you, you've been together a long time like you guys be happy uh-huh. like nowadays it's it would be fine you know if william divorced kate and married somebody that worked in asda everyone would be like unconventional but go on wills go on lad yeah i i kind of uh, yeah i get that i understand it's very that. modern thinking but then I just think that he was entitled as fuck because he just didn't get it. Well, maybe he just thought, you know what, I'm the fucking king of the country and maybe I'll just make a law that says I can marry who the hell I want. Yeah, I think this is what he thought because his mother, Queen Mary, did believe in the divinity. She was the last person to believe in the divinity of the monarchy. Like, they were born to rule. That was their status. But God's chosen. Times were changing, and there was a lot of people who thought, no, 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 fuck off, do some work. And and this is the kind of... So if he came before or after this point in time, I think he may have been able to get away. Like, 100 years before, 100 years afterwards, I think he would have been able to get away with this. But it was just... It was in the wrong time. At this point... We'd just gone through a world war. There was still people suffering to try and to people suffering to try and and feed themselves. And and the recession had just gone on. Nineteen twenty eight, the Great Depression, and everything. So it was just a time when everything was under the microscope. Now that being said, the Great Depression and all that, Eddie. Even though he did abdicate, he still had an income via the Duchy of Cornwall, which are basically rents and payments given to the eldest son of the previous king. And his residences, which were Sandringham and Balmoral Castles, earned him £30,000 a year. Very nice. Yeah. So Balmoral. The monetary side of it didn't really affect him. Uh, and even when he abdicated, he, he got paid, I think, £10,000, I can't remember, I've not put it down, but £10,000 a year out of the king's own pocket to kind of keep him in the background, should fuck up kind of thing, hush money. 
Uh, but it was the protocol that was that confused him about him and his wife that would change because he is now an ex monarch and he mm-hmm. thinks he should be treated like a king, but he's not a king and this mm-hmm. is where I think yeah. he got confused with it all. Now when he abdicated, his brother took over the family business and his first point of order was to make Edward the Duke of Windsor. Now this was just maybe to keep up the pretense that he was some way important but it did come with some provisos. Now the main ones being that this position had been created for him and only him. If, if he so had, he couldn't give it away to his mates. <laughs> if he had kids it would not pass on to them. They would just be Bob Windsor and Stephanie <laughs> Windsor. They wouldn't be <laughs> Duke Bob Windsor, or, or what, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and Wallace Simpson wasn't allowed any of the trappings that would go along with being the wife of a royal. She had no titles, she had no special treatments at events, she had nothing. Poor no Wallace. one would give her anything. Now, she was born a prol, she will die a prol, is what they basically were saying to her. Now, even though Edward agreed to this, he would lobby for decades to have privileges bestowed on her. The one thing I think that Wally Simpson wanted was to be a HRH, Her Royal Highness. That's literally what she wanted, but she didn't even... She wasn't even addressed as a Duchess of Windsor. She couldn't even get that until later on in her life. Now, that's just them being stubborn, <sighs> but, you know. I feel like that that's what Meghan wanted, didn't she? She just wanted to be a princess until she was actually a princess and then realised just how shit it is to be a princess. Like, oh, you think you're just going to go to balls and be in gowns and try on glass shoes? No, 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 no. You don't get... No, it's a seven-day working week. We need you in this country tomorrow, here in this country this afternoon, and then, you know, by late on in the evening. You thought you were going to do Netflix Netflix and chill? Fuck that. We want you in Zambia doing some charity work. Like, forget about it. Your life's over. Yeah, and I think I think this is what Wally Simpson would have had an issue with as well. Even though she wanted yeah. this from day one, like she was born to she, when she was younger, she wanted this, and she made her way up polite society to get into this circle. She wanted it so badly. I don't think she would have under, been able to understand what it was about because. I th- there's a massive difference between being an American socialite where you're basically just partying day in, day out and being her Royal Highness. Exactly. It, it, you, where you have no life. If there's no parties, you not. You, if you drink, you are drinking under the proviso of you are not getting drunk. In fact, let's just make that alcohol fucking free. Exactly, exactly. You can't do there's anything. A, it's, it's a world of difference. Being a socialite is probably so much more fun it's in, in fact i don't think being a royal is fun at all but i think being a socialite is just like party central day in day out yeah now should have been screwed yeah now the way the royal family treated wallace simpson would drive a wedge between edward and his family or the royal family and they would basically be estranged for the rest of their lives now that sounds familiar <laughs> Another sticking point between him and his family is the fact that he was a Nazi sympathiser. I did hear that. Yeah. So but I just hope that he thought they had some great invention- inventions. Like, who else would have thought of de Glocker? Maybe, but not from what I've read. Uh, maybe we've read different sources. Yeah. So Your fucking left-wing sources. Yeah. After his abdication, him and Wallace set up base in France and they were married in a 16th century built chateau, which was called Chateau de Candere, which was owned by Charles Bedau. Now, Bedau was a millionaire businessman who had set up a management consultancy firm, Bedau International. Now, this was kind of one of the the first management consultancy firms in the world because... As today, 
no one knows what the fuck they do. They just make money for nothing. So, hmm. he, okay, it sounds like the business I want to be. Yeah, in. he first came up with the idea, and this made him a millionaire. Now he used his business links that have made him a millionaire to rub shoulders with other like-minded, powerful men. One of these was Axel Venner Gren. This guy was a Swedish meatball. He was uh, the founder of the Electrolux company, uh, which makes all them Hoovers. Uh, mm-hmm. Vacuum cleaners. Hoover is. They the don't know. Electrolux don't make Hoovers, and yes, they make no. vacuums. Yes. Hoovers make Hoovers. Hoovers make Hoovers. <laughs> Brand new, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but Axel uh, Werner Gren was one of the richest people in the world at this time. Unfortunately, he was a Nazi. He was best friends with Goering. And during the Second World War, or when the Second World War broke out, he tried to act as a peace broker in so far as asking Britain and the US to cooperate with the Nazis rather rather than fight them. And when the Duke suggested that a tour of Nazi Germany would be a great idea, this is in 1937, Bedou and Werner Gren were the people that organised it. I mean, right. So, so let's let's just say. Right. right okay. Go on. Defend Hitler. <laughs> I'm waiting <laughs> for this. He had some good art. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Do, I'm not gonna defend Hitler. What I'm gonna say is, maybe they chose their PR campaign well. Right. If you go in and you look for some people to rally alongside you, some powerful people that are on your side. Right. You don't go in. And you don't go. So we're planning genocide of millions and millions of people. How do you feel about that? Right, you go in and you go. So we are building these. It's a. It's an. It's a. The, the fastest airplane you've ever seen ever. But it's got a cloaking device on it, which we think will be great in in a war. You know, if there if there is ever another world <laughs> war, we would be your guys for the cloaking devices um we also you know we're very we're very about keeping people in line you know we don't we, there's none of this hippie riots and shit and you know if you were if you were hearing that side of the story you'd be like yeah no i'm i'm on board with the cloaking devices i'm on board with keeping people in line and, and no you know riots and fires and stuff then if they launched in with the we're also thinking about you know mass murdering millions of people just only of a specific disposition though like not just it has to be a specific type of people then you'd be like okay so this is where i have the issue with hold up (laughs) yeah but what if they just left that bit out if they left out all the bad stuff and just kept the good stuff like all their inventions and all the the you know all that i mean they cued really well they had really good marching techniques their uniforms were always so crisp if they kept that and ditched off everything else or just didn't tell you you know, it's like it's like Wonga, right? They don't they never tell you the bad shit, yeah? You yeah, you are yeah, yeah. sucked in, you're signed up because you're like, I mean, they're giving me money for like it's gonna be fuck all to read but like what like what even is like sixty four percent? It's 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 about half. It's fuck yeah, all. Yeah. I'm not even yeah, gonna yeah. borrow that much. Yeah, yeah. And you're signed up and you're sucked in. And then yeah, So yeah. I can kind of see like they must have had a good PR leader, right? Like, let's leave the uh the genocide thing let's just not oh, no. indeed indeed yeah but <laughs> what we also have to remember is that this the extermination of the jews as the nazis one it didn't just happen overnight it wasn't just one thing it was a build-up to that there was propaganda going out and there was arrests being made and people were disappearing all over the show so by 1937 the propaganda there's no wink, tiktok though exactly exactly so there, there's no social media to try and get this out but there was media who did write about this and maybe, maybe Z edward couldn't read as a member <laughs> of the royal family i'm sure he would have got military <laughs> briefs and mi5 was the thing and but let's Not if just he was say, too busy getting his dick wet mate uh, yes fair enough let's just say he is naive <laughs> he's very naive yeah. yes so in 1937 Edward toured Nazi Germany. He had private meetings with Goebbels, Hitler, Himmler, Hess, and von Ribbentrop. 
He also gave a Nazi salute when meeting the members of the SS Death's Head, which were Hitler's bodyguards. And Goebbels went on to write, The Duke is wonderful. It's a shame he is no longer king. With him, we would have entered into an alliance. I mean, it does kind of make you wonder, doesn't it? What would have happened? <laughs> Although, probably, I mean, we still had a government then, so, like, the government could always overthrow the king, right? So, the government would have gone, hang on a sec, you're the king, you're just a figurehead. Fucking sit down and shut up. You say that. So, when the Second World War kicked off, because Edward was based in France, he was made a liaison between the British military and the cheesy and surrender monkeys of the French High Command. He was actually supposed to be an agent for British military intelligence reporting on the French defensive line. And in fairness, he did actually do these reports and they were in depth because he, he obviously had army training. He, he was a veteran of the First World War. Uh, but they were ignored by the higher ups. Now, to feel relevant, maybe Eddie would tell anyone and everyone that would listen anything and everything that he knew. <laughs> this is just like that Blackadder episode. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> With George's German uncle. <laughs> yeah. He. I don't know. Wh- so they were in uh. they were in France and France hadn't been invaded at this time so they were still hosting dinner parties and they were still part of the jet set over there so they were still moving in circles but unfortunately as with what happens with most spies the spies were also moving in these circles so there was two who were, well, Werner Gren and Badu, who were reporting back to the Nazis anything that he would say. (laughs) But there was also two staff in his retinue who were actually uh, German spies. And when they went on this tour of Nazi Germany, they were actually going through their stuff. These spies were going through the Royal, the Duke stuff when he was out shaking hands and giving Nazi salutes so I, and I bet I bet those I bet the I bet the German spies right that were there like say like over here when he was over here just not holding his own shite just telling everybody and anyone everything that he knew I bet the German spies were so fucking obvious as well I bet they had the worst German cockney accents like, like all right, my son. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like the, the, the guy in Blackadder again, the one that's in you. Yes. <laughs> I just, just, I bet it was so obvious. Yeah, like, not even trying. Everyone, ar- every- yeah. everyone around was like, you know, those Cockney guys mm. with the terrible fucking Cockney German accent. You know, they're German spies, right? And he's like, no, they're not. They're from the East End. My name is Bill Von <laughs> Smith. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> maybe this is where Blackadder got its ideas. Probably, uh, in, 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 yeah. Genius. So once France went tits up and fell to the Nazis in June of 1940, the Windsors were screwed away to Spain. Now, even though they had Francisco Franco in charge, Spain was neutral. What a stupid name! At this. Point. He was also a horrible dictator, and uh, Francisco Franco. Yeah, that's like Richard Rich. Yeah, it's not uh, Vicky Vickerson. It's not. Yeah, they didn't have to think hard for that first name, did they? <laughs> so the Duke was upset that he wasn't being used in a way that belied his status, and he made it known that he wasn't happy by telegramming Winston Churchill and pretty much everyone on the war board that he wanted more authority and prestige now you may think fly on the wall with that conversation yeah you may think after a year of war they've got better things to do but you know edward thought he needed to speak to the people at the top now this came after running away from france which 
they took several trucks to move their clothes and belongings at a time when Britons were undergoing daily bombings and rationing. So oh, Jesus. He's not really selling himself well at this moment in time. What did Churchill say about this? He now Churchill protected him all the way through the abdication. No, through the abdication he protected him and he wanted him to have a job that an official job, something that he he could do. He didn't want him to be shunned because he thought he was royalty and he didn't want all the history that goes along with that being thrown away. So Official he, pencil sharpener. He could have made that role. Yeah. So His pencils are in dire need of sharpening. Uh, yeah. So he did try and protect him, but this is the point where the relationship now sours. And he did go on to say, after 1941, the man changed. I didn't want to be a part of that. And he actually avoided social situations later on in life in the 50s and 60s where the Windsors would be because he didn't want to be tarred with what they became to be known as. Uh, so in July 1940 the Duke was appointed as Governor of the Bahamas to try and say his first for power but in reality this was just to get him over the other side of the world and just to make him shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Go enjoy a tropical holiday and fuck off. <laughs> Pretty much. Now, intelligence services had identified that Wallace Simpson was in, contract, in contact with Von Ribbentrop. So she was apparently telegramming him on a regular basis. And some sources went so far as to say on the Germany tour... They were having an affair. You know. I mean, yeah, she'd probably, the Germans were smooth. She'd already had an affair at this point with the US ambassador to France uh, before this, when they were in France. Allegedly, if that's a thing I need to say, but that's... And she probably had an affair with Edward while she was still married to her husband before she divorced him. Yeah, everyone was fucking everyone, so... Yeah. 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 Uh, now... Speculation, of course. Yeah. Before the Windsors left Spain in June, they were purposely delayed by Nazi agents. Eberhard von Storer, who was a diplomat and the ambassador to Madrid, telegraphed von Ribbentrop asking what he should do with the Duke. He received instructions, explicit instructions, to delay them. He did this by using the fact that Eddie was upset that he wasn't allowed back to Britain. Now, he wasn't allowed back to Britain because at this time period, obviously, people may have seen this as a threat to the throne's power. Uh, mm -hmm. And Mosley was behind... Mosley was the fascist leader, like, leader of the fascist English fascist party or whatever they were. But there had been things floated about if... The fasc if a fascist government did take over in England, then they would get Eddie back in on the throne. I have two two issues with this. Firstly, what? if you're in the Bahamas, why the fuck do you want to come back over to England? <laughs> right, to me, that is a one-way trip. If, if somebody said to me, do you want to go on a holiday to the Bahamas? I'd be like, yes, forever. Thank you. I'm staying there. All right, why would I want to come back to England? And secondly, why are all <laughs> why why are all <laughs> all evil german people called von something or other yeah yeah I no yeah i feel like the only von something or other that was ever good that i have ever heard of in my entire life and i mean i've heard of like i don't know six or seven vons is the von traps okay and you know they drove a hard bargain as well. Like, I can't get behind that musical. Like, if my kids started singing at me, I'd be like, shut the fuck up and put some Xbox on, you daft ones. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Why are Vons always evil? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. They are... So, as I kind of know it, it's like... First name of somewhere. Do you know what I mean? So, Von is of somewhere. 
which is... Betrayer of 300. Yeah. That just sounds fucking stupid. So, kind of how they... <laughs> that's how their aristocracy. So, because they're... Jennifer of Wengerberg. Witcher. Fit. Geralt of Rivia. On a unicorn. Uh, <laughs> On a unicorn. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yes. So. But, yeah, if... So, basically, what... Uh, Van Ribbentrop authorised was to tell Edward that if they could get peace with England or if the Nazis won then he would be put back on the throne with only the minimal direction from the Nazis of how to run the country which do you think he wanted to be king again, though? He did. He he, he wanted. He, he did. He he. So basically, so the duke was receptive to this idea, and it actually took up until the third of July to travel to Portugal, which was the staging post for him to go to the Bahamas. So he was supposed to go in a matter of weeks, but this has taken months now. So he's dragging his feet to take up this new position. Now again, he delayed. He was delayed by Nazi agents in Portugal because they stayed at the house of Dr. Ricardo de Espirito Santo e Silva. Now, yeah. Is that the British way of saying it? Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, how, that's how we say it around here. Uh, Jerk my pal. Yeah. <laughs> Je suis triste. <laughs> uh, Silva owned the bank. Uh, Espirito Santo, and he was a friend of the Portuguese dictator. There were so many fucking knocking about at this time. Uh, <laughs> Antonio de Oliveira Salazar. He was also uh. a Nazi agent, and he tried to persuade the Duke to stay. Now, this got to a point where the Nazis had an active plot to kidnap the Windsors and take them by force to Germany if they weren't receptive to this idea. Now, this was called Operation Willy, and there are books about it, there are films about it, about how in-depth this is. Now, they it's, it's, a proper, it's a proper spy thing. Like, they delayed... I think they they popped one of the tyres on their... On, the, on one of the trucks carrying their luggage... They knocked out a chauffeur somewhere along the line. It's like it's like proper James Bond shit the way they try. And walked past one of them and went, "Excuse me, sir, does this rag smell of chloroform?" (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it was it's proper fucking dumb (laughs) shit. But due to MI6, who were just trying like crazy to get the Duke to the Bahamas, and dumb luck. They managed to get aboard a boat on the 1st of August. Now, th- <laughs> MI6 is just like, we didn't fucking sign up for this. Yeah. Oh, hey, man, we desk people. Where are my five? Like, this is no. Yeah. No. It's like a fucking Leslie Nielsen film. Uh, <laughs> now, this boat had been taken from active service in the war to transport the Windsors to the Bahamas Ooh, and all wow. their luggage. So they, so they was just like to the to the like the, the the captains like you don't need this this boat right well actually yeah because we're in we're in the there's a war going on actually yeah yeah no it'll be fine load the bags on to there's two will, will two trucks fit on this on this yeah. little dinghy yeah he didn't he didn't like... <laughs> I used to be the king so yeah. Sure, he, you know what? Fuck it. He didn't make himself any friends. <laughs> uh, so now, in the second part, because this is a two-parter, we'll delve into what actually happened when Edward was governor of the Bahamas and his involvement in the death of the richest man on the island. It really doesn't get any better for him. It sounds like another Blackadder episode where he goes to be president or prime minister of Dunny on the wall Dunny on the wall Dunny on the wall then beef Dunny on the wall (laughs) and there's like four of them or something Mm. yep it just sounds like that Uh, fucking insane yeah so on that bombshell (laughs) 
we shall see you all next time thank you so much for joining us i have been consummatious and and i have been a trier thank you so much bye bye the mo podcast the mo podcast the mo podcast the mo podcast the mo podcast